Hey everybody, Texas Stroke here, Lance's Performance Shop at LoneStarMopar.com. It's Saturday night, about 9.20, something like that. I'm out here trying to kind of catch up, get some stuff done, see if I can't get a surplus of videos going. First off, my apologies if I sound terrible. Uh, I seem to go like a week where I can't breathe out of one side of my nose and I'm better and... And then I'm uh, back like this again, so I'll do my best to make it through that. And uh, what I always want to stress to you is I have links and timestamps down below. I also typically have what the video is about in the title and in the thumbnail. Sometimes I sneak some cool stuff in because I want you to actually watch. But if you see something you're interested in, if you ever think, hey, I want to buy that, and then you come back, boom, it's right there again. All done for your convenience. I don't know what number this tool haul is. For the simple fact, we've got a couple of videos I want to crank out before Christmas, this kind of being one of them, and then we have one that I have to do before Christmas, and then another one that just makes a whole lot of sense to do around Christmas, so we might be going heavy on the KC tool stuff, German tools here, if you want something different let me know, but that is what this is, this is a KC tool haul, uh, if you exceed the $100 threshold, you get the German tool sticker pack, if you buy anything from KC Tool, you get a bit of things. Currently a Philo number two. And right now, let's actually check the date on this because this is another reason for me to do this. The seasonal, I've covered this before. Here's a little pamphlet for you. This is good through December 31st. As of right now, December 4th or whenever I'm doing this, I think I'm gonna have this out before Christmas or at least when this is still relevant. Everything KC Tool branded, uh, pretty much minus their screwdriver stands, is on a significant discount. If you've wanted anything, if you need a hoodie, if you need a hat, if you need a shirt, uh, the beanies, uh, which are brand new, those in the hoodies, I would suggest you pick those up as we approach winter. Take advantage of the sale price, that's probably the cheapest you'll ever get them. And similarly, use them. If you place an order and you're sitting there at $60 in product and you're going to have to pay 15 ish in freight to get it to you, buy yourself a shirt or a hat, hit the 75 threshold, get your free shipping. Again, currently as of recording this, I'm not an affiliate. I don't make anything. I'm saying that because that's the exact strategy I apply when I purchase things. One more thing I want to do, I'm not sure we've gotten to really showcase this much, but uh, these have been updated. So you've got Picard, you've got Halder, and I believe we've got a Heiko in there, which has been there for a while, but since I do things by the title, you kind of know what this video is about. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, here we go. This is what I need. I need you right there beautiful so you got a heiko sticker and we have a heiko tool haul i have pulled people in the past and the results have been in a casey tool haul you the viewer at least the ones that participate in the polls wants to see a mix if i were to buy you know a screwdriver a ratchet a wrench something random and they're all different brands that's great that's what you want to see you and in fact prefer that over here's all hazette or here's all Kinipex. Sometimes, depending on what it is, uh, we go that route, you know, against the grain. Other times we don't. In this particular case, I'm going against the grain. I'm going against what the pollsters tell me. <laughs> and, uh, for good reason, everything that you're about to see in this tool haul is from Heiko, and it is all brand new. When I ordered this stuff, it was like before they had released the drop, right? They had the email that went out to people on the newsletter list. Uh, if you follow, if you're subscribed... They have, of course, you know, the new arrivals, which I always check almost daily. Sometimes I don't get get a chance, but uh, check tool of the day, check new arrivals, right? So I was a little privy to this before it, like, became official, and uh, this stuff was ordered ASAP. Some of it I had to wait on. There's one item in particular uh, that we will see at a later date and time. But up first, let's just get comfy here, shall we? This is Heiko. Uh, let's see, we'll go with the KC tool part number again. If you see this, if you love it, if you want it, I have it linked down below. I do that so people can't complain about the links of the videos or the rambling. You have the opportunity to take care of yourself. But what we have is going to be part number 090001. We probably will just go with the uh, standard stuff here because they're all long part numbers. It's going to set you back $20.39. And that is a terrible idea to have this in plastic. One second. 
Hard edit and mulligan for two reasons. Number one, I debated doing a comical intro where I went from the red, dirty, dirty, dirty alpha to this because it was green for Heiko. And number two, I just threw this thing down and you, the viewer, got a massive glare. And look at all the cool stuff on my wall. But this is gonna be a lot better for you. We'll just throw it down. And man, that thing looks good in camera, uh, especially out of the glossy, glossy plastic, which reflects everything, unfortunately. So, 090001, I had said the part numbers are ridiculously long. We'll probably just throw the items down. We'll see. $20 and 39 cents if you're thinking like wait 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 i i thought i had seen you bring this stuff in have you not brought this stuff in and i make time up here looking for the tape measure which i believe i sat the box of tools on and we're just gonna roll with this guy nope it's behind me stanley lever lock and stay there we'll go with the easy to see black widow how about that because this is important you kind of need to know Coming across, we're old school. We're gonna call that 18 and three quarters. Uh, in terms of your depth here, you're looking at about what? About nine and a half. And thickness, which is important. So is the aesthetic there. Look at that black and green, just a great color combo. That's gonna be roughly, I don't know, inch and a quarter, something along those lines. Gives you a good idea on the rough dimensions. And if you're thinking like, hey, don't you have these? Well, we've got a few. Most recently, we brought in like the LL Cheapo from Harbor Freight. I've got that thing at work. My complaint about it is it didn't have this. Number one, it didn't look near as cool, but number two, it didn't have that. The reason having branding or a part number or anything stamped or cut in a foam kneeling board is important to me. Whenever I throw it down, I keep this side up. What does that mean? Well, I'm less likely to make my jeans look worse than they usually would, right? So this is my dirty side, and this is my knee side, right? It's the way it works for me. And uh, you can kind of see testament to that here, because if you think, wait, I thought you'd bought one of these German ones. Boom! My trusty Ghidorah 906. Now this one, uh, obviously, it's got the Ghidorah blue, it's got the part number, it's got similar, very, very similar holding handle. The thing is, this one, as you can see, has been... Actually, it looks pretty clean on the camera. It is not. It is really dirty. Uh, I use this one all the time. I've done everything with it. Uh, planting flowers, combing fins on the air conditioner, <laughs> everything here in the shop. And it, believe it or not, is considerably smaller than the Heiko. You can kind of see the profiles there. It's a lot softer. I don't know if that's from me using it. There's also a bend in it. But again, my knees are usually here doing that. Why buy this one? Number one, it looks awesome. Uh, again, the black and the green is just killer. I mean, you can't argue with that. That's going to be the backdrop for this video, in fact. Let's, let's make it official. We're going to christen this sucker for this tool haul right there. So... Why get another one? Well, you can never have too many, and also, when I bum help from people or I've got friends over here, I kind of feel a little bad when, like, I've got the cool, you know, like, you know, soft foam pad for my knees, and they're on the concrete, and I'm like, yeah, you want me to get a box for you? Type of a deal, you know? So, that's where this comes in. I love the pit mats, the big fold-out things. Problem is, I have two of them here. One of them, I have my grill for the truck sitting on, and the other one, I've got the hood on. So, once we free up there, I'll have big ones. I'm going to use the pit pad as like a creeper uh, for low-profile stuff, but I absolutely love these. As I've gotten older, I don't like putting my bare knees on concrete, and this is cheap insurance. I will tell you, if you think that looks really cool, but I'm not spending $20 on that, Home Depot, you can usually find Husky ones that are like way bigger, probably for about the same money, maybe a little less, depending on what day it is. Um, Part stores, you might get lucky here and there, get something maybe thicker or bigger for less money. The $20 mark's really not that bad. To give you an idea, call this one 20 bucks. The Ghidorah, call it 28 The Hazette, which I do not have, uh, it clocks in, as you might expect, the most expensive 30 bucks. But it's kind of cut out to their logo, so, you know, if you're a Hazette fanboy, you might keep that in mind. Nonetheless, that's what this one is. Uh, my nephew is usually pretty happy with green, so this could probably be his, unless I decide to take it because it's more comfortable, and then I'll give him that one. We'll see. <laughs> but, uh, that is what that was, and uh, again, my apologies on that glare, which I think will just hard edit out of the video. 
coming in what do we want to do so so many choices i've got my little box over here i need to dig into and i think we're going to go with this guy and again part number or no part number we'll just do it four one seven zero one one zero this thing will set you back seven dollars and 69 cents it's got a protective cover on it so what is it i know what you're thinking you're like oh my gosh a screwdriver this guy why do why do i even watch this channel so predictable well you would almost be right it's like a screwdriver that's met a bench grinder and uh, that's because this is a brad all in this case six millimeter and it's kind of cool because i don't think i have a square point one also i did not take a detailed look at this stuff until right before the video that handle is way cooler than i thought it was it's not comfortable it's not anything like that it's actually a little slicker than you would think it would be it almost looks like it's textured there but then it's just you know the oil spill here it feels like cheap plastic but it looks really good and it's also supposedly shock proof so we'll pull that surgical tubing or whatever that stuff is off check out the point on that sucker good lord that's one of the few times i'm like well i see why they did that uh so what this is my nephew had to do a few projects recently like for school a physics class and what came in really handy was my little philo awls and uh i had them for like dorky interior stuff and they've worked well for that it's not something i use all the time but i sort of had like smaller ones and i thought you know that's i'm interested in this and i want to see what it's like and pick it up it's pretty reasonable and like i said that square point in the six millimeter is something i did not have so it'll kind of fill the gap I want to say we have like a three or a four and an eight, maybe something along those lines. So this will work quite nicely there. Uh, plus, like I said, it's a really cool handle there. So as best I know, that is in fact, as you might have guessed by the handle, made in Germany. Now, where to next? Let's let's leave Europe and go to Asia. Yeah, this is always the disappointing parts of the videos for people. But rest assured, we shall recover. And what we have here something i just couldn't pass up on i don't recall if i'd gotten the cutex yet spoiler alert i still love that thing that's why we had a 50 minute video on it i've bought more they're awesome they're probably at this point in time the ultimate solution for what i do unboxing not necessarily here i'm talking like actual real world work too you know uh, opening packages cutting down boxes cutting down packaging cutting boxes to pack all that stuff that thing has been absolutely amazing right here this as i mentioned in the cutex video like i had accrued quite a few you know like utility knives if you will you haven't even seen near all of them but uh this is one that since it was a new item i was like oh do we do it or do we not and, and i erred on the side of doing it so sadly this does orient from uh, china it's 1166 which is not bad but what kind of drew me in and made me like pull the trigger is that it was unique and I didn't have anything like it. So price point again, 1166. If you recall, we've opened up a Heiko reel recently uh, that was just like the Picard, you know, sort of along the lines of what we have from Knipex. And then we've got a couple of others. But this guy right here, I don't have anything from anyone, nor had I ordered anything that looks like that. So let's see what they have to say about it. And uh, it's going to be a zinc die cast housing with an ergonomic 2K soft handle. You're going to see Heiko use 2K quite frequently. Looks like they're advertising a 19 millimeter uh, razor blade, utility blade width. Again, I think that's standard. Don't hold me to that. We'll figure it out at some point in time. Uh, right here, there is an automatic blade feed when not in use. Again, this stuff interests me. It's easy blade change, compact, retractable construction. So, let's see if we can easily pop this sucker out. Just one staple, and then this. Cool. That was uh, pretty easy. In hand, it feels good, but a little slick. That could be snot, and I'm dead serious there. <laughs> My nose is... Uh, running like a uh, criminal leaving the bank right now but uh yeah it's slick it's it's not me it's not my problem it's the knife's problem uh, and this is not me like plugging the cutex or something i would vastly prefer what we just unboxed previously and have the picard equivalent but again it's the shape like this part is fine it's just this part is you know 
I'm not a man that wears lotion, that's why my hands bleed, but good lord. Uh, so what's going on? Oh. Oh, fancy. Okay, now that part also is very smooth. Uh, I thought this, okay, so that is going to be the blade. How does it stay? Oh, we have to lock it. Oh, man. If you're left-handed, this might be the knife for you, because you'd probably be doing this with your... Well, let's see. I don't like that this is like a two-hand operation. Why is that recessed so bad? Oh, my lord. Okay, what are we doing wrong? Oh, I get it. All right, so I think all that does is... What? <laughs> okay, so it was locked in the up position. What is locked? Okay, so surely this must be for the for the actual razor in that case. So right now, I can't do anything. You slide this out. I'm starting to actually pay attention to the product here. If you look at this, it's currently retracted. This is how it would be in your pocket, per se, right? A little bulky. I've seen far worse. I hate the, the chrome job there. It's just disappointing. Uh, not because it's terrible, which it kind of is, but just because I don't like chrome. It doesn't really fit the aesthetic here. But you slide this out. This apparently can never lock. You just slide that out, and then that reveals right here these little one, two, three, four, five or so steps. That's where your blade's at. Now note though, I personally would not like cutting like this all the time. So I'm hoping that this, no, it's in the, what is up with this thing? Okay, slide that down, what happens? Nothing. Okay, I'm gonna slide this up while the blade is open. Is that not possible? Okay. All right, well, I don't know why this is complicated, but it is. Um, why, why can I so easily override this? This switch on the back seems to have nothing to do with this, and it also doesn't seem to have anything to do with the blade. If I slide it out, nothing stays. Right? If I switch this to locked, nothing stays. If I have this here, which is currently in locked, and I go to unlocked, it doesn't stay. If I slide this out and it's currently unlocked, and I go to locked... Oh, that's my bad thumb, but... Jeez, people. <laughs> okay, this is giving me flashbacks to the Matco Ratchet. Uh, it's easy to articulate here but I can't do so elsewhere. I have no clue what that's supposed to do because it doesn't seem to lock or unlock anything. Um, interesting shape, ergonomics, yes. Slippery, yes. Um, if you're someone that likes to have this shape and always hold the blade to cut, which again, Maybe it's a European thing where you can't have an exposed blade or something. I don't know. This would drive me insane. Um, that is basically a paperweight at this point. A cool looking paperweight. It's the overachiever of a paperweight. Uh, I, it's usable. It's functional. But if I can't figure it out from doing this, I don't really care to. So... Looking at this, the blades are extremely sharp, handle with care, retract blade fully when not in use. Well, it kind of does that. Dispose of used blades, keep out of reach of children. Here's their graphic, which I didn't look at. Uh, automatic blade feed when not in use. Easy blade change. I have no idea what they want me to do. So, right there, you slide this, and it goes forward. And then you get to this point, and your thumb goes there, and you slide the blade out. Open and closed, yes, yes, but it doesn't seem to work. I don't know what I'm missing. It's currently, if I have it here and we go left-handed, this is unlocked, okay? So that's in the unlocked position. It's really hard for me to hold that there. I'm going to lock that. Okay, so now that stays. But are you able to literally just press this and... 
right. I have nothing to add aside from it's a paperweight. So we're, we're not gonna go there. We're gonna leave China and we're gonna go back to Germany and I'm just gonna go straight to this product which I know isn't going to suck. And uh, it could be a paperweight too, but it'll be a way cooler, way nicer, way more functional, way more uh, straightforward and not confusing product. So this is going to be, believe it or not, the most expensive item second to our kneeling pad here, which that thing still, just every time I look down, I'm like, oh, that looks cool. <laughs> and, uh, even in my peripheral. This is part number 66840's cable knife folding 3.5 inches 1601 okay so you kind of you kind of know what's going on that was the box that doesn't matter anymore this is the plastic i would cut it open with what we just did but that would take too long we'll just use our fingers and here it is if you recall i've got the german cable knife showdown uh, which we introduced them all. I then used them like religiously and had it all fresh on my mind. And then I just never made the video. I know what I like the best. I've since acquired the Ghidor, uh, which is really nice. And then this one. So this one's a little slippery. It's very similar to a couple of them. It opens smooth though. Are you taking notes in WS Knife since we're having issues here? Remember this guy? Yeah, it's never gotten better. So that's why it permanently stays open. This is very, very smooth to their credit. It's also from Solingen. Uh, dun, dun, dun. There's no actual... Huh. Usually they say Solingen on there. This one does not. But it does say it was made in Germany. I've bought things before that didn't get updated. Um, like this, sometimes, like when it first came out, it might say, you know, made in Germany, made in Ireland. Uh, this one says made in Germany. I'm inclined to roll with it, but I don't know. Maybe it's not. Nonetheless, it at least opens and it stays open and there's no lock button that doesn't seem to serve any purpose at all. And it does cut cable if you need it to. So by cut cable, I mean take the jacket off. So we might make an addendum, add some, add some others in there. This one's a little thicker than I would like to see. The green is very true. It's like a classic green. Uh, it's dark. Uh, that stainless is... Got quite the luster to it, doesn't it? Hmm. Anyway, we'll see. We will see. Maybe I'll uh, shoot Casey to an email on the country of origin there. But uh, again, it does say Germany, so we'll run with it. And we didn't waste time like we did with that one. So we're already winners. Right here, let's stick with what we know. Let's stick with what we like. Let's, uh, let's go this route, okay? This is something I was very excited about uh, because, as you know, on this channel, there's one thing that we do and we go all in on it. And uh, this one right here, you didn't have to go too far in and you didn't have to go too deep into your pocketbook. This is going to be part number 411002. It's going to set you back $5.34. And you're thinking, like, wait, he's doing it. He's, he's doing it, isn't he? He's bringing out the screwdrivers. Oh, man, I can't believe this. Why are we here? Well, fear not. You're right. That's exactly what we're doing. And if you're thinking like, whoa, what's going on here with this guy? This is Heiko's acetate handle. And of course, you think of where they're located in Ireland, and it's kind of like the Emerald Isle, Emerald Green. There's just something about an acetate handle when it's new and the aesthetics that you can achieve with it. I don't know how this thing's going to age. I'm sure if you... Also with acetate, as you do, if you use it heavily, it kind of does eventually kind of succumb to your hand and the forces you apply to it. Not like cave in and collapse, just sort of like the rough edge or where your thumb lies, you know, kind of gets an indention and it becomes slightly more comfortable. But uh, this is not something I really bought for comfort or plan to use heavily. This is just, I want to showcase this. It looks so freaking good. And if you recall back, and I had all this stuff here and I forgot to do it uh, when we had the uh, slight cut there at the beginning. This is where I first saw it on their spinner. I really wanted to try this thing. Spoiler alert, the Stavilla locking one, which is dirt cheap, especially for Stavilla. It's still my favorite, but it was just the aesthetics of this drew me in. And I always said, I believe when we got to it, I was like, man, I'd love to see some screwdrivers with that handle. That's what I always say about the Philo Alls we have, you know, that red acetate. The green, though, just really, really looks good. It's so unique. You don't see it too often. Uh, also from Heiko, since I'm now remembering to do this stuff, if you're thinking like, hey, you know, 
why is all this brand new to KC Tool? I thought they had it. What they did is they expanded. They went from what they had to adding a ton more stuff that sort of has to do, you know, with the breakup from Viha. You know, if you're unaware, they no longer sell Viha tools. Heiko, you know, comes in and kind of fills some of that void for them. So in the past, we had brought in the Veracat Ratchet, uh, which I have used this thing. Again, the green there on the quick release, super cool. Uh, I've used this multiple times, usually for small very small because I rarely use quarter drive but like stuff when you're taking a grill apart uh, that's in fact if you watch the Ram Revival this is what we use little Veracat um, then we have this when I was kind of trying to pick out figure out which sockets I like best from the German brands it's a 9 16 if you for some reason hate like the satin chrome or the mix or the blend or the polished and matte this is almost Americana here I mean heavy heavy chrome there so have at it uh, one of the probably most used things that I got from Heiko is this. It's a big half inch wobble extension. Dirt cheap. I'm talking like Harbor Freight type pricing for what you're getting and it's from Heiko. Uh, and then probably the creme de la creme of Heiko stuff, which I have been trying ever since I bought my first one. I said, hey, are they going to do those in SAE? The answer has been no. <laughs> so I try. It's the max line wrench. I just grabbed the 13 there. Again, those kind of go against the grain of what you see from the big German companies. This is almost like if I had this in my hand and covered it up, you'd be like, oh, you got a classic American wrench there. Heavy chrome, right? The max lines are fantastic. They're also affordable. The Heiko standard wrenches are really, really cheap. And I say that price wise, not quality. <laughs> Also, we have a couple of their deep offset box end wrenches. So that stuff existed. All of this that you're seeing in this tool hall is brand, brand new. Again, I don't think I stressed that quite enough at the start because I obviously forgot to bring it in here. But on that note, let's jump to our next item and think of it as a big brother to what we just had. This is part number 411-0020-80. This is going to be another acetate handle and not quite sure on the price because I think this came on a separate order and I forgot to document it. I'm going to say probably in the neighborhood of five to eight dollars. This is beautiful. This is probably as big as it's going to get. This is going to be the uh, classic, you know, four inch hundred millimeter shaft number two Phillips. If you can kind of see it there, it looks pretty good. But what just steals the show is the handle. Now this is very, very, very undersized to what I prefer and like. It does fit the hand okay. Uh, it's got decent spin to it, but I mean, it's it's swallowed, it's, it's out. Where's the back end that's supposed to be here? It's gone. <laughs> and uh, this is something else. It's gonna be in the shootout. We're gonna make videos on it, test it. Who knows, maybe it'll perform great. Maybe I'll like it in certain situations, but just on the bench, not necessarily what I would go for. But man, does it look good. And that's one of the big things here. I wanted to highlight this stuff so you'll know, because I realize not everyone is like me and checks the site frequently. You'll know that this stuff is available. It is all affordable and uh, great grifts if you've got you know, friends or kids or parents or whatever uh, that are into this stuff, or even if green is their favorite color, you're home free there. Now, continuing on with the uh, theme we've got with the screwdrivers, part number 4790000. This is going to set you back $4.70. Okay. And uh, that you're thinking, like, well, that's, that's cheaper. What the heck is it? Well, check it out. And you're thinking like, whoa, 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 show me that profile on this thing. What are you doing? Are you like going to adjust float bowls or something with this? Is that why you bought it? That's kind of one of the things I had in mind. But let me show you. If you're thinking like, oh, you're an idiot. You just bought that because the Heiko is glossed and not like filled in with color. Well, that's, that's another thing. But what's this? Yeah, that's right. It's uh, it is reversible, so it's keyed right here. I think you can kind of see it. I've got it sort of turned to the side. You can see on the shaft as we go back to the Phillips side. If I take a look at it myself to save time, press it in. It's just a reversible blade screwdriver. 
this right here would be the gift that I would give people uh, if they were into green or Heiko or German tools or they've got like everything and you're like, oh, there's nothing to give this person. Under $5, fits in a stocking, easy to hand over. It'll fit in the glove box of their car, you know, center console, desk drawer, kitchen drawer, whatever. And you get a number two Phillips and a slotted driver. So super cool. And again, looks amazing with that acetate handle. Coming in, what are we down to? Well, we, my friends, have reached the bottom of the box. There's but one item here hiding, literally hiding. Part number, 511002. This sucker will set you back 817. You're like, whoa, went up in price here. What, what is this? You know, surely it's not another screwdriver, you say. You would be mistaken because if you're sitting there and you're like, man, that does look cool, but I can just tell that's undersized. Even for me, it doesn't look like it's comfortable. I got burned out on acetate with the Craftsman screwdrivers or my cheap Stanleys. If that person is you, this is your Heiko answer. This, if you didn't know, is a stubby. That's why it's so small and awkward looking when you cover the 25 millimeter shaft or one inch there. Again, stubby drivers, they should serve an important function, most, most importantly of being stubby, right? But this is green, it's got the white font, made in Germany. You got your size, you got a hanging hole, you got the black top, no size indication here. Uh, the tip looks really good, but some of you are probably like, wait a minute, is that a hot air balloon? And you're thinking, oh, how funny, you know, novelty item, I should make one of those and put an LED light. And the rest of you are probably thinking, oh, that's right, it does look like a hot air balloon. But you'll eventually get back to the point, like, I've seen that profile before. What is that? What would this guy have that looked like that? Was it Viha? Does Viha make Heiko's drivers? Um, if I just drop that there, you're like, whoa, you've got a black, black air balloon with a red cap. That's so cool. And you're like, oh, wait, I see. <laughs> it's Philo. And yeah, uh, I'm not 100% sure on this, but uh, if I was a betting man, I would feel pretty good about this. Um, I'm just throwing that out there. So. Does Philo actually make these for Heiko, the acetate handle? It's possible. I don't know for sure. If they're doing these, which Heiko is going to call that the 2K handle. All right, that will be Heiko's 2K. Uh, and Philo, it's the Frico. I'm probably saying that wrong. I don't think anyone's ever corrected me, but I'm always going to say it that way because it just, it's funny and it works for me. And these do, you will forever never be able to look at one of these. Doesn't matter if it's Phillips, slotted, posy, whatever. It looks like a hot air balloon when they're this small. So, uh, yeah. But that was our final item. And if you're thinking to yourself, like, wait, wait, wait. Lies. You would not have brought in a number two stubby without getting the standard equivalent. You know, four, mil <laughs> four inch, hundred millimeter shaft. Not available yet. And uh, there may be something special we do with that one. So, kind of uh, waiting to hear back on Colin on that front. But, uh it's, it's not the end of the story here for the Heiko screwdrivers, sadly. Uh, some of you will be happy, some of you will be <laughs> terribly perturbed. But it is what it is. So overall, uh, really cool two-haul here. Again, everything that we brought in is brand new uh, as of like, what, early, early November at KC Tool. And the greatest thing with Heiko is the prices are very, very reasonable. So... Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the Heiko stuff, go to KC Tool, you can go to Brands, or you'll see it at the top. And uh, you click it, and then you come in, and you'll have, like, wrenches, screwdrivers. You know, if they don't make certain items, you know, you won't see that, like pliers, for example. But uh, you come in, you can find it, you can use the part numbers and links, whatever you need to do. But yeah, super, super happy with this stuff just because of the uniqueness. Again, these have never done me wrong. Uh, this has been a workhorse so far with zero issues. I haven't really used this enough to say definitively, but I mean, it's been fine so far. I am not sure that I'd be a huge fan of like a bigger size, but possibly, you know, this is just, I don't know. I'm real particular about handles and how they fill up my hand or don't, but in terms of the ratchet and the functionality, so far so good. Uh, the Brad all is incredibly beefy looking with that square point. I would stay away from this. I'm sure someone will be like, Yo, oh, that's all it's supposed to do is lock in place there. That's cool, but I guess I was under the impression that that lock, the red button, would let me lock the blade. I get having that automatically retract. I thought this would be an override for it. 
It's because if I, let me just case in point, turn that off. We're about to max the uh, time out there, 30 minutes. So I'll try to get this done quickly. But if I turn this off, this stays here. It's not like it automatically retracts. And if I push that out, it also stays. Now, if I was cutting, it stays. So I don't really know. I think this design would be greatly improved if this button locked the blade. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Some of you will say, oh, that's not the point. It's supposed to be out there. Yeah, I would agree with that, but having it have the ability to be fixed would be great because this is actually a very unique ergonomic design. Uh, but as it stands right now, I will never use it because this is going to kill you. I don't care about the ergonomics when I have to stretch and flex my hand that much. So if you're opening one or two boxes, this would be fine. If you have to cut them down, I would be done with this thing. It would be going away. <laughs> I would just pull the razor blade out and use it. Um, it does look good. It's just for me and some people will disagree, but that's fine. And again, it stays in place. You know, for example, this is in the unlocked position. I just want to prove that. Let me, in fact, flip it for you and then zoom in. So this is the unlocked position at the bottom, locked at the top. So what I'm going to do is not touch that at all, and slide this, and then I'm going to go right back to open. Okay. I'm going to turn this and you can see no trickery. It's still in the unlocked position or the one that looks like a swan. And if I try to press down, it's fixed. So you slide it back and then if I go up to the locked position okay and we push this forward and I come here and press down as if I was cutting it's fixed but then watch this it's still in the locked position I'm gonna put this hand here I'm gonna have this one here I'm gonna pull my hand as daintily back as I can and only have my index finger I can retract it what is the point of having the lock if I can manually override it it makes no sense um, I don't know if your place of work or country has strict rules against things like this. I would move, number one. But number two, <laughs> if this is something useful for someone, that's great. It is not for me. It's a really cool design. It's a bit slippery. I think we could fix that with greasy hands. Or not greasy hands, but like dusty, which is typically what mine are like. I understand this, but this should be to hold the blade, not to hold this because it doesn't hold that. So, I don't know. Uh, I would stay away from this unless you want to play with it or it's perfect for you. Some people, that might be like the bee's knees, and that's one of the reasons we showcase stuff. But for me, I'd rather have the $12 invested in two more screwdrivers. So, with that said, this is the new stuff from Heiko. Uh, that acetate, man, it just looks so good in that green. Uh, I don't think anyone, as much as you might hate acetate handles, as much as you've grown to despise them as you've upgraded your tool collection, no one can argue. There's like a little special place in your heart and you're like, oh, it's probably like what my granddad had, you know, or man, that looks really good. I know it would be uncomfortable, but man, it looks good. And that's kind of what we wanted to do. Again, we will test that and uh, we'll see. Like I said, maybe we'll like it in certain situations, hate it in others. We'll make sure. Who knows? Maybe the tips are going to perform flawlessly to the point that we don't care how uncomfortable or less than ideal the handle is. But yeah, uh, that is what is available. Again, the novelty gift here that's actually functional for people and around $5 is this reversible blade screwdriver. I'm telling you that because I'm, again, hoping that I have this out before Christmas, but that's it. I've had good luck with my Heiko stuff so far. Again, Casey Tool basically had ratchets, sockets, wrenches, and then like some random utility knives. Now they've expanded vastly. There's a ton of stuff here that I didn't bring in or showcase. Uh, be sure to check it out. Again, you can go to Heiko and see everything they've got. I'll have all this stuff linked for you, but uh, let me know. What do you think of the acetate handles? Are you excited about the Heiko uh, Philo line there in the 2K? If you are, would you rather have the black and red Philo? You can't pick yellow. We got to go with this line. So black and red Philo or green Heiko. I think that'll be an interesting little dynamic there. Uh, if you've used any of their wrenches, ratchets, sockets, let everybody in the comment section know how you're liking them, how they're holding up for you. And uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. So I'm going to blow my nose, try to get inside. I think we got this done in a decent amount of time. Uh, the best thing we might have bought very well could be this uh, kneeling pad right here. Uh, this should be fine. Um, these 
as good as they look, I'm just not going to use them that often because let's be honest, I've got a ton of drivers and I'm going to prefer just handle wise. Uh, but these just so, so good looking. Uh, that thing is never going to get used for more than holding paper down. If someone were to steal it, I don't know that I would care. They might've done me a favor. Uh, this thing, I think it's not often that I use those, but it looks super imposing and that just kind of adds to it. I love the uh, square taper, you know, it's like the round shaft and then it comes down with the square taper. <laughs> <laughs> it's just looks sinister almost like a bearing scraper i guess and then this guy right here i'm inclined to say this is probably really german and made in solingen but it doesn't have that on the blade it also doesn't have like the ross fry you know rust free equivalent so we'll see i'll try to get some answers on that but it's not a bad deal at 11 bucks regardless i'll quit rambling i had a good time out here I'm going to get inside and uh, see. Maybe I'll be able to wake up and breathe tomorrow. Highly unlikely, but you never know. So we'll see how that pans out for me. Nonetheless, making headway here, getting caught up as best I can. Uh, again, any thoughts, experiences firsthand with this stuff, let me know. But uh, if this thing wasn't so weird, this would have been a really fast video by my standards. So my apologies there. But, uh, some of you probably enjoy the rants about things. So... Um, LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. With that said, once again, thank you so much for watching. Brand new Heiko stuff is available at Casey Tool. If green is your color, definitely want to check it out. Bonus points, very, very affordable stuff from Heiko. I'm going to head in. Hope you have yourself a fantastic weekend. And since we should be getting closer to Christmas, I hope you have yourself a fantastic Christmas as well.